So uh, international recruitment is one of the uh, key strategies for NHS England to supply the workforce for, for nursing that we need in NHS. And at Doncaster and Barcelona Hospital, we have been actively involved in international recruitment um, since 2017. Um, but we did not have an um, international recruitment team till recently, uh, which involves myself, Estelle, Carol, Erish, uh, and other members of the education team who help uh, the international recruiters when they come. So to make sure they feel welcome, to make sure they have the information that they need, really, to settle down in the new environment and to give them a positive experience, really. So uh, since 2020, um, we've had about 70 nurses join the Trust. Um, the last cohort arrived uh, on 9th of May and uh, as we speak they are having their uh, induction in the badminton hall. So uh, uh, predominantly the nurses that we are appointing they are from south of India. Uh, a couple of them are from Philippines and a few of them are also from Zimbabwe. So we are trying to recruit from different parts. Uh, the key criteria for us to recruit nurses from abroad is to make sure they have some experience after they register in their own country. So we ask for about one to two years of experience and uh, they must have cleared uh, the exam for English. So making sure they are proficient in the language as well as they are proficient in the, um, uh, in the clinical um, abilities as well. So there's a test called CBT which they have to clear, which is the competence based test. So I myself, uh, I get involved a lot in the recruitment side of things. So I make sure they have uh, the, they have cleared the English exam as well as the CBT test. Uh, I look at the CVs and um, I then uh, am the kind of the recruiting person along with other members of the panel. So we do virtual interviews pretty much every month and uh, we appoint um, on an average about 10 to 15 nurses every month, um, predominantly from India and Philippines. And once they've been appointed, we then set up um, like a, a, a welcome seminar for them. So before they arrive, so make sure that they have uh, all the information they need before coming here. And if they have any question, they have an opportunity to, to ask us. And we also provide them with the welcome pack. So which has all the information about Doncaster and Bassett Law, what's, how the hospital runs and the facilities the, that we have on site, as well as just general information about the area. We also support them initially uh, in the basic things that they will need, for example, registering with a GP, registering with a dentist, um, finding an accommodation, um, meeting their ward manager, going to the occupational health, getting the uniform, IT support. So we, we do work alongside them um, just to make sure they have um, a good induction really to start off with. So when they, when they arrive to the UK, we um, um, pick them up from the airport and uh, take them to the accommodation. Um, I mean, I'm quite pleased to say that we are able to provide them an accommodation off-site now. Initially, it was a challenge uh, because there are not many rental properties in Doncaster, but we have worked very closely with the landlords and the letting agents to make sure they have good uh, facilities off-site. So we provide them with the shared accommodation initially. As the nurses are coming as cohorts together, they tend to share it, the accommodation with each other. And uh, after they arrive here, they obviously they have to clear an exam called the OSCE exam and we provide them the support and the training needed to clear that exam. Uh, so it's an um, it's, um, uh, uh, objective structured uh, examination of the clinical skills. And it involves 14 stations. The, there are only five centres within the UK to give the exam and we tend to take our nurses to Northampton to, 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 give, to give that exam. Um, the education team works really, really hard with our nurses to make sure that they have the training uh, to clear, clear that particular exam. So um, initially when they arrive, we provide them with an induction period of up to two weeks. Uh, following that, they have the clinical placement in their ward area and following the clinical placement, they have something which we call boot camp which is like uh, a two weeks intense training for OSCE mainly. So at that time, education team are heavily involved uh, with the nurses, making sure that they have all the information they need to pass the exam. So a lot of effort, a lot of uh, support is given to the nurses to make sure they clear that exam. And once they write it, uh, they um, get the result the same day. And uh, I'm quite pleased to say that 99% of our nurses, they clear that exam. So we have a very high pass rates, which is you know, really um, good to see. And once they, they pass the exam, they get registered with the Nursing and Midwifery Council and they can then start working as a registered nurse on the ward. So that journey itself, as you can see, you know, from them arriving in the UK, writing the exam, getting the PIN number can take three to four months. 
Following that, um, the nurses then start working on the ward and they start taking charge of the team. Um, and then my role comes in as to, you know, with regards to career development then, because, you know, they might be thinking of, they have worked for so long on the ward and they wish to progress into different careers. So I uh, run a monthly session, which is called the Stray and Thrive session for all the international nurses. And in the session, I provide them information on uh, what roles exist, because the roles which exist in the UK are, you know, not there in other countries. For example, a specialist nurse role, and advanced nurse practitioner roles, the ward managers, you know, there's so much specialization within the UK. So I provide them with all that information that they need, how to write an application form, um, how to prepare for an interview, you know, the, uh, the, the support that we offer from uh, um, a health and well-being team. Um, so there are various topics covered in the Stay and Thrive sessions which are run every month. And I believe that's something that would, you know, help really with regards to retention because we just don't want to appoint nurses. We also want to make sure that they actually progress and thrive in their careers when they come to our trust. Um, so there's a great focus on, on, on retaining them and I think to provide them the op opportunity, the support they need to progress in their career will help us achieve their career goals and eventually help us retain them over here. I mean, there are a number of challenges in the international nursing uh, recruitment program that we face. In the very first step, like when we're recruiting nurses, we're actually competing with other trusts like Sheffield, Rotherham, South, you know, so, so there are different trusts competing for the same candidates. Um, so our initial challenge is to make sure that we, 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 we provide them, the existing nurses with a very good experience so that then they can spread the word within their colleagues and that has happened. The nurses who have been appointed have spoken to their friends back in India, in Zimbabwe, in Philippines and then those candidates have then come forward. And it's really go good to see that because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously they've had a positive experience and they've shared that with another colleague who then comes forward and wants to join the trust. So it's just it's just about supporting them and really um, you know making sure that we're looking after them so so they feel happy and they feel they belong here. Yes, hello, good afternoon. My name is Irish. I am the um, international nurse educator. I work with the um, medicine team, education team, and we are involved in the international nurse program. So I started my journey here with the NHS and Doncaster Royal Infirmary back in 2017. I am once an international nurse, just like the, the ones I am teaching now. Yeah, um, that was in 2017 and I started working as a healthcare assistant, about three. After taking my OSCE um, and then successfully passed it, thankfully, um, worked in respiratory ward as a band five nurse. After such, um, working for five years, um, I got the role here as an international nurse educator and now I am involved in what I went through five years ago. So we are involved in teaching um, the international nurses so that they could get through their OSCEs and also support them even after that. 